What's up? Welcome back to Small Soldier. In today's video, we'll take a look at how I painted the cockpit of the Tamiya 148 scale Spitfire Mark I. Let's go. Hello friends and welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. I thought we'd go over a little bit of what's in the box first and I'll also go over some historical information before we get into the build. Supermarine was founded in 1913 and in 1917 was joined by designer R.J. Mitchell whose successful S5, S6 and S6B racing seaplanes gave him experience that contributed significantly to the Spitfire which was developed by Supermarine after it had been bought by Vickers in 1928. The Spitfire routes are in a rejected design. The Type 224 was drawn up in response to specification F.730, sporting an inverted gull wing and fixed undercarriage. While it was not selected at that stage, Mitchell set to work refining the design and tried again in July 1934 presenting the Type 300 to the Air Ministry. It was approved under a new specification, F.3734. By April 1935, a mock-up had been completed and on March 5, 1936, prototype K5054 completed a successful maiden flight from Eastleigh Aerodrome in the hands of Vickers test pilot Joseph Summers. Testing proceeded well enough that before it had finished, 310 of the aircraft, now nicknamed Spitfire, were ordered. From May 1940, Spitfire Mark I's flew the skies of Western Europe as war broke out in earnest. Perhaps the Spitfire Mark I's finest hour was in the Battle of Britain. Doggedly and ultimately successfully defending British skies from incoming German aircraft, often tasked with taking on the fearsome Messerschmitt Bf109Es, escorting DO-17 and HE-111 bombers. While the legendary Spitfire passed through numerous variants as it remained in active service into the 1950s, the initial Mark I will remain long in the memory as a veteran of the ultimately successful struggle with the Luftwaffe. Obviously, the first thing you want to do is remove the parts from the sprue trees with a sprue cutter or side nippers. For the version I'm building, I need to remove this part here, shown in the instruction above. These photo etch fine tooth razor saws work great for this task. Always use a sharp blade to remove what's left of the sprue gate. This will help reduce any need for filling or putty work. Use the side of your blade to remove any excess flash. Not that there's much on this outstanding kit. I also needed to remove this part for the version I'm building. Make sure to remove any mold seams or parting lines or you'll end up seeing these under the paint. It's easier to do it now than later. Use a sanding stick next to help smooth the parts out. Tamiya Extra Thin Cement will help remove any sanding debris and help to smooth things out as well. For all the great engineering Tamiya has put into this kit, there are a few spots you do need to look out for. There are a few small pin ejection marks that you may need to take care of, but they were really easy to remove and didn't require a lot of time to clean up. Here I'm checking to make sure that the parts fit snug and there's no steps from the inside parts to the outside. As you can see these parts just drop right in. It is true what everyone says about this kit, it is a flawless fitting kit and you should have no issues putting this together. Well if you follow the instructions of course. I did have a couple issues with fit but that was my fault I just didn't read the instructions correctly. And this old brain doesn't always think the way I want it to, so... Eh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Ah. 
I had some excess cement seep through the seam and it left a bit of a raised edge so I just had to go in and re-clean these two seam lines. Later on in the build and probably part two you'll see me doing more scribing with that blade. It's always a good rule of thumb to rock the piece back and forth as you're sanding it, especially with these oxygen tanks or piston rods here on this part. By doing this, you'll be less likely to have a flat spot on those round areas. A tea candle is CA Glue's best friend. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen me using this trick before. It's one of the best ways I know of keeping CA Glue from drying out. If you've been frustrated with CA Glue drying out on you, give this trick a try and I'm sure it'll impress you. Here's a handy tip if you're having trouble holding small parts, leave them on the sprue. This way you can clean off the mold seam all the way around the whole piece until you get to the very end and then all you need to do is clip that part off and clean up the sprue gate. Masking can be the bane of a modeler's existence. We all don't like doing it, but it's just a necessary evil. There's really no easy way of doing it, you just kind of have to get in there and do it. Mind you, there are a few things that may help. One is using a toothpick to burnish those pieces down. I also find scoring the piece with a blade will help make a relief where you need things to be a little tighter. And then by using some masking fluid, you can seal up those areas where you made the score. You can also use blue tack or poster tack to seal up certain areas where things are a little harder to mask. Uh, masking fluid can be used also to seal up areas like that. Oh yeah. This color was as close as I could find to cockpit green in my stash, so I mixed it up and sprayed it on, and I think it was probably a little too dark to start with, but uh, I do some remedies to that later on to lighten things up, as you'll see. As you can see, the color cup is way too full. You only need about half this much paint in your color cup. Uh, I wasn't thinking, and I just poured the whole thing in, and uh, yeah, it spilt over the edge a couple times, so don't do that. I've just started using these AK 3rd gen paints and uh, so far so good. I still add a little bit of water but they come out super smooth. I also like this little wet palette I got from Bulldog Models. It's really handy, super convenient and is perfect for small jobs like this. He makes a ton of really cool 3D printed stuff. All modeling related to help you keep yourself organized and well to help things from 
tipping over on your modeling desk. I'll leave a link at the bottom of the page, go check them out. The instructions have you cut off these four bolts, and from the reference I've seen, it is correct. As you can see, this is the proper way to spray paint. There's a lot less in the cup, and chances of you spilling are pretty much nil. Unless, of course, you're a cotton-headed ninny muggins like this guy. As you can see, the color of the cockpit green is a little on the dark side, but you'll see how I lighten that up later on in the video. Resin parts can seem a little intimidating to a lot of people if you've never used them, but they're pretty similar to plastic other than you need CA glue to adhere them to the model. The other advantage is they often replace parts that are inaccurate or poorly detailed. One word of caution when you're working with resin is always wear a mask or a wet sand because nobody wants to have to wheel you off to Jake's funeral home because you poisoned yourself. Here I should have done what I originally planned on doing. I wanted to punch each of the dials out with a punch and die set and place each dial in each area where they went. This worked out okay, but in the end I think it would have been a lot cleaner and uh, would have got a better finished look by doing that. You can't see it so much at a distance, but up close the dials are bulged maybe a little too much for my liking. So uh, yeah, it looks pretty good here, but you know, <laughs> I'm my own worst critic, so, uh, you know, I'm sure you are too. What's that old saying? Uh, hindsight is 2020. And, yeah. By repainting the control panel area, I think it really helped hide the deco film a lot. It just flattened everything out and uh, worked to my advantage, I think. Overall, I think those decals look pretty good. Since this is the early variant of Spitfire I'm doing, the seat was actually a composite material called SRBP, or Synthetic Resin Bonded Paper. And this is why it has that reddish brown color. And overall wash is the first thing that I'll be doing to the seat and the rest of the components in the cockpit. This is a mixture of black and a very dark brown. This will help create some false shadows and also give a bit of a grimy, lived-in look to the cockpit. This is freely applied to all parts of the interior of the cockpit. It might look like a big mess right now, but uh, you'll see later on in the video that everything comes together and looks really good in the end once all the steps are completed. And you don't have to worry about any paint reacting with anything because the base colors are acrylic and there is a gloss coat over top as well to give that extra added protection because there is a bit of scrubbing that I do coming up and you'll see that here. You can either let things dry naturally or use a hair dryer like I do. And then once everything's dry, I just go in and remove most of the material out of the center of the panels and around any of the detail. It will also leave a bit of a worn appearance to the paint.
This may seem like I'm doing the exact same thing I just did, but this is more of a controlled pin wash now. Uh, the paint has been distressed. Now I'm adding a pin wash to reinforce those shadows. And you'll see coming up, I'll be lightening the center panels as well. To me, this was one of the worst parts of the kit. Uh, overall, Tamiya did a great job on this, but I had nothing but problems with this photo etch. For those of you that have built this kit, I'd like to hear in the comments if you had any issues with the photo etch being really magnetic like this as well. And my CA glue did not want to adhere to it. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that was just frustrating as fuck. Uh -oh. I'm a bit old school as well. I kind of like the brass photo etch. I find it a lot easier to work with. Please feel free to comment below and uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you like brass or do you like that nickel plated f***ing better? I would say that most of you are going to say brass, but uh, I could be wrong. Let me know below in the comments. I'd like to know how many more stubborn old buggers there are out there. Wow! If you haven't heard of one of these yet, well, let me explain what it does. It's quite simple, it's just some clear resin in a pen-tipped reservoir. And you just place the clear resin on any part you want to make look clear. You hit it with the UV light and that hardens it in about five or six seconds. It's as simple as that. There are other brands on the market and probably cheaper alternatives from what I've heard. Apparently fly fishing shops carry a brand of UV resin that dries really clear. I found on white surfaces it tends to dry with a bit of a yellowish hue. Since the seat is the main focus of the open cockpit, I thought I would add quite a bit of detail to it painting wise. I used a bit of figure painting theory here. So what I mean by that is using a lot of wet blending using glazes and washes. Then blending those in multiple layers. I also added a little bit of stippling which gave the seat wear and helped reinforce the highlights. Dry brushing could be looked at as a lost technique that not a lot of people use anymore and maybe some don't. It can be used effectively if you do it right. I like to use a multi-layered technique. That's essentially taking the same color three or four times and layering them on top of each other. Once I achieve the right look, I'll then go in with multiple layers of different types of glazes and those glazes help to tone down all the harsh dry brushing and help to blend it all together. One of the final steps is to go back in with a pin wash and also use those enamel glazes to create more false shadows. This will create a lot more depth and really make the piece pop. Some may find this a little too tedious and that's fine, but for me I think it's worth the time spent detailing the piece, especially since it'll be the first thing that people see when they look into the cockpit.
nice. Here I'm mixing up a lighter shade of that cockpit green which will be used for doing some more dry brushing similar to what I did on the seat. It's the same technique used three or four dry brush layers followed by multiple glazes of thin down acrylic and then oil washes over top. Once that's complete I go back in with some titanium white and buff oil paint and essentially scrub that into the center of each panel using a dry scrubbing motion. This also will add an extra layer of wear. As you can see, all the parts fit perfectly together and to be honest, I probably didn't even need to use any glue here. They fit so well. I was really impressed with the way the cockpit fit into the sidewalls here. It just plugged right in, you add a little bit of glue and bam, it's in. This tends to be one of the crappier fitting areas on an aircraft kit and I was really impressed with that. Well this is about as far as I'm going to take it in this video. Stay tuned for part two where I'll take this beautiful kit to completion. Hey if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing Hit the bell notification below, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share this video with someone in this great modeling community. But most importantly, don't forget to keep those brushes wet.